Hello everyone. So today's topic is regulation of enzyme activity. In this lesson, we are going to learn about methods of enzyme regulation. Here we have five important methods. The first one is allosteric regulation. Second, reversible covalent modification. Third, proteolytic cleavage. Fourth, feedback regulation. And fifth one is regulation by isoenzymes. So enzymes are protein in nature, so which are controlling the speed of chemical reaction in our body. Enzymes are also known as biological catalysts. Enzyme regulation is the process by which activity of enzymes will be controlled or regulated in order to regulate metabolic processes. So many enzymes are working together in multi-step enzymatic process, but one enzyme is responsible for regulating metabolic process. So those enzymes are called to be regulatory enzymes. So these enzymes are also known to be rate limiting enzymes. Why? Because these enzymes will be controlling the rate of the reaction. So here we can see four important regulatory enzymes. So which will be controlling four important metabolic processes. For example, glucose 6-phosphate is a regulatory enzyme which controls the gluconeogenesis pathway. Glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase is another regulatory enzyme which controls phosphopentase pathway so which is also called to be HMP pathway and phosphoglucose isomerase controlling glycolysis pathway and finally phosphoglucose mutase is regulating glycogen synthesis here enzyme regulation can be explained by five important methods the first important method is allosteric regulation so in this regulation so we need to learn about the difference between non-allosteric enzymes and allosteric enzymes non-allosteric enzymes which doesn't have allosteric sites it has only catalytic site where substrate molecule will be attached but whereas in case of allosteric enzyme it has allosteric sites as well as catalytic sites and non-allosteric enzymes so which are following Michaelis maintenance kinetic parameters and here it is producing a hyperbolic plot allosteric enzymes which are not following Michaelis maintenance kinetics and here it is producing a sigmoidal plot the regulatory molecules which are present in allosteric enzymes which are binding with allosteric enzymes by a reversible non-covalent bonds and these molecules are very much important for the regulation of enzymatic activity so these regulatory molecules will be two types allosteric activators allosteric inhibitors so allosteric activators will be enhancing the chemical reaction so here these allosteric activators will be attached at allosteric site which induces the conformational change in the site of uh, enzyme so here the substrate molecules will be attached so why because here the conformational change which is complementary to the shape of the substrate molecules but here inhibitors are inducing the conformational change so which is not complementary to the shape of the enzyme substrate molecules so that is why the process will be inhibited so by these regulatory molecules the enzymatic activity will be regulated and allosteric enzyme will be two types homotropic enzymes and heterotropic enzymes in homotropic enzymes regulatory molecules and substrate molecules will be same in heterotropic enzymes regulatory molecules and substrate molecules are different in nature so here in this picture so we can see heterotropic enzymes and these allosteric enzymes which has two types of subunits subunit r and subunit c so subunit r is called to be regulatory subunit subunit c is called to be catalytic subunit at regulatory subunit a modulator will be attached at a catalytic subunit substrate molecules will be attached for example aspartate 
carbomylase so which is an enzyme which is useful for the biosynthesis of pyrimidine nucleotide so here it has 12 subunits in which six are catalytic subunits and six are regulatory subunits and feedback inhibition process so this is a feedback inhibition process this is also one of the type of uh, allosteric regulation so here l isoleucine will be biosynthesized from the l309 the end product here it is produced which is inhibiting the regulatory enzyme that is 309 dehydrotase so this is a multi-step process here five enzymes are involved to form l isoleucine so this is about feedback inhibition here the end product will be inhibiting the regulatory enzyme activity and the next one is reverse covalent modification here in this process a catalytic activity will be enhanced or modulated by covalent modifications so we have more than 500 modifying enzymes are present in the cell so here the regulation process is occurred is mainly due to adding or removal of modifying groups so we have many a common modifying groups like phosphoryl groups acetyl groups methyl groups amide groups etc so here in this picture the phosphokinase b so which is inactive in nature so this enzyme will be phosphorylated and converting into active form so here a phosphate molecule will be attached to this enzyme and the activity of enzyme will be enhanced so this is a re reversible process so sometimes after hydrolysis process these phosphate molecules will be removed and again this activated phosphokinase a is converting back to phosphokinase b which is less activated form so we have many covalent modifications so phosphorylation here as we said already that so phosph phosphate molecules will be attached with the enzymes so these phosphate molecules will be attached with amino acid residues like tyrosine serotonin threonine and histidine so which are present in enzyme in adenylation process here amp molecule will be attached to the enzyme at the tyrosine residue in acetylation process acetyl group will be attached at lysine amino acid residue so these are the other important uh, modifications the next one is proteolytic cleavage so here inactive form of enzyme is converting into active form so inactive form of enzyme is called to be gymosin which is also known to be pro enzyme so which is inactive in nature and this inactive gymosin so which is useful for storage of enzymes so here the active site will be masked by a polypeptide chain so that is why here so these inactive gymogens will be useful for preventing autocatalysis process so in this proteolytic cleavage a polypeptide chain will be cleaved from this inactive gymogen so now these active sites are exposed and now this inactive form is converting into active form so these are the examples for proteolytic cleavage so pepsinogen so which is in active form so which is converting into active form that is pepsin so this synthesis this biosynthesis will be occurred in uh, stomach and these are the other pancreatic enzymes which are present at pancreatic region so which are converting into active forms and the next regulation is feedback regulation so which is different from feedback inhibition if you see the feedback inhibition the end product here so which is inhibiting the activity of regulatory enzyme but whereas in case of feedback regulation so
so here the end product so will be inhibiting the synthesis of a regulatory enzyme by interfering with the gene transcription process so this is the example here hmg coenzyme reductase is a perfect example for this feedback regulation here the cholesterol is the end product when the cholesterol levels are increased so these cholesterol will be inhibiting the synthesis of hmg coenzyme a reductase and the last enzymatic regulation here is isoenzyme uh, this is indirect method of enzyme regulation so here uh, this enzyme isoenzymes will be performing a similar catalytic function but having different amino acid sequences here these isoenzymes are also producing different kinetic parameters like uh, different variable uh, km v max values and v not values and ldh is the perfect example for this isoenzyme so lactate dehydrogenase here the lactate dehydrogenase which is having two types of genes so gene a and gene b and here the lactase dehydrogenase which is a tetramer so which is having two subunits or two genes gene a and b here the regulation of enzymatic activity is done by a relative amount of gene a and b so here it is having different combinations of gene a and b so here in this ldh5 so here gene a is present it doesn't have any gene b so which is present in uh, skeletal muscles and liver so this ldh5 will be useful for a catalytic process to convert the uh, pyruvate to lactate which is present in glycolysis and ldh4 3 2 so which are uh, acting in uh, intermediate activities in a cell and LH1, so which is which is useful for converting lactate to pyruvate. And here it is producing the same catalytic activity, almost a similar catalytic activity at uh, different conditions of the cell. So this is about isoenzyme. This is the end of the topic. Thank you.